Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, a story and a song. Thank you for joining me, whether you're joining me live on either YouTube, the channel is at Jewish Rock Music, or on my Instagram channel, the handle is DebraCohenMusic.com. And I thought that we would learn a little bit today about the Jewish Valentine. Be my Valentine. If this interests you, then make a place where you can listen for the next 30-ish minutes and enjoy a little bit about a story and a song. And I'll be right back right after this message. Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, Deborah Cohen Music, and I'm so glad that you took the time to listen to my podcast, A Story and a Song. It's about my life to share some wisdom and some mistakes, hopefully that we can learn from together and laugh at maybe, starting in the 80s in a new wave rock band in Boston with two singles that are still available on Spotify. Boston Nights and Dreamin'. And then on my worldly journey that we're all on, I morphed into a spiritually dominant being where I am a truth seeker and write songs of praise while having one foot in the world writing sync music. So listen up and share. And again, I am Deborah Cohen. I'm so glad you're here, whether you're watching on Instagram or YouTube. I'm an indie artist and a new author of a book, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict, Nonfiction Historical Facts for Those That Are Curious About How Did Palestine Come About? And you can find that wherever online books are sold. But today we're going to talk about Jewish Palestine. Valentine. Now there is a national Valentine's Day in America on February 14th. But did you know that there's a Jewish Valentine's Day that's coming up? I believe it's on August 19th. So if you're dating somebody Jewish, or you are Jewish, or maybe just have a Jewish friend, this would be kind of a nice sentiment to do something special for them. And I see that Laura is in the house. She's saying, hey, happy Sunday. Have a super day. Big blessings and peace and joy. Glad to see that storm didn't get you. (laughs) Keep singing. And she's talking about the storms in Florida because, let's see, we just went through Debbie. And that's my name, but I'm not the storm. I can be. (laughs) Uh, But see, what's coming up next as as far as storms goes? I think Ernesto and then Francine, but everybody down in Florida is watching Gordon. Gordon, they're saying, might be the big one. So I've only been in Florida for eight months with my husband. So like we're kind of like getting ready for the big one. (laughs) And we've just decided to stay home. We're not going to deal with the traffic. Well, if God wants to take us up in a tornado, then, you know, okay, there we, there we go. Just like, uh, who, what was that uh, show where the house went up into the air and let's see, was yellow brick road. What was that? Somewhere over the rainbow or something like that. Okay. All right. And thank you. I see creative soul music. Love dance is on Instagram. So thank you very much. Please keep your comments on topic. And if you want to let me know where you're watching from, that's always a cool thing as well. So let's get to learning. Uh, The Jewish holiday, Valentine's Day, is called Tu Ba'av. So repeat after me, Tu Ba'av. Tu Ba'av is a Jewish holiday that is sometimes called the Jewish Valentine's Day. It's celebrated in the Hebrew calendar of Av, the 15th day of Av, which is actually, Av is a sad time in Jewish history, but right in the tail end of Av is Jewish Valentine's Day. 
which is the night between the 14th and 15th day of the Hebrew calendar and begins on the night of a full moon. Really? We got a full moon that day? Okay, but uh, August 19th. I'm not sure if uh, anybody know it's a full moon or not. I'm not sure. I'm learning with you. Ah, Laura saying The Wizard of Oz. Thank you. I loved that movie as a child. And I'm like, why can't I remember the name of it? I kept thinking somewhere over the rainbow. Yes, The Wizard of Oz. So we'll go away psh, if that's God's will. Okay. So the holiday has ancient origins. But its modern form has only recently re-emerged in Jewish life. In the second temple period, Tuba Av was a day of joy that served as an opportunity for matchmaking. And uh, Jews have a special person that they work with when it's that age, when uh, children become of age to be married. They actually sit down with the matchmaker and, you know, try to find out what the child, or I call him a child, but they're a teenager, wants in a spouse. And then the matchmaker is hired to look for that perfect spouse. And uh, my husband and I did not use a matchmaker. God was our matchmaker. And I think I shared that story maybe last week, if but it's interesting. It's an, or you, if you find a podcast where I'm a guest, oftentimes people want to know about how did I meet my husband? I'll tell you, it was on Facebook. <laughs> and it was like eight years ago. <laughs> so it wasn't too long ago. Yes, and we're still happy. For, for those of you now that want a Jewish matchmaker, listen on. The holiday fell out of use for many centuries. We're talking from the sec second temple period. But in the Talmud, it describes how unmarried women would dress in white and dance in the vineyards under the full moon to find a partner. Just imagine women wearing a white dress. I mean, for me, it would be a Laura Ashley dress or a, a vintage dress because I'm a hippie, right? I still love lace. And get decked out under the full moon and go to the vineyard, the grape vineyard where they serve wine. That's where I would go. And dance away the night. Well, actually, look, I've got a white lace shirt on. I didn't even know about this because I'm reading it for the first time as you hear it. Ah, oh, yes. Wearing white lace and dancing. And the men would like check out the chicks or the women and pick one. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. All right. Uh, so in recent decades, Israelis have revived the holiday with festivals of singing and dancing, and it has become a popular day for weddings, for parties, and proposals. North American Jewish organizations also celebrate Tuba Av with teachings and celebration. So I am in North America, so I'm sharing these teachings in case you're curious about Jewish Valentine's Day. Now, Tuba Av can be a day for increasing Torah study. Yes, can I get a yay? Yay. That's my bag. I'm serious. That's my bag. Okay. Some rituals associated with Tuba Av include, now, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you have a Jewish friend, a Jewish lover, Jewish family, you are Jewish, here's some ideas for you to make it special. Swapping items. Participants bring a small item that symbolizes something they want to bury from their past year's love experiences, as well as a piece of clothing or jewelry, or a scarf they no longer wear. These items are then swapped so that everyone goes home with something different. Now, don't bring in your dirty old rags, jeans, or whatever, broken jewel. It's got to be something special, okay? Another idea is to donate clothing. Ladies, if your closet is getting bulging, this is the perfect time to clean your closet. And you can donate clothing to a basket or designated space. Or in America, they have these very convenient 
drop-off boxes. You just drive up to it, pull down the lid, and drop in your bag of clothes, which I do. <laughs> okay, so that's very interesting. And I'm going to share a little bit more in detail if you want to know more about the history right after this message. Let's talk about Blame Game. It's a hot matter. So let's get it right. To live by logic. logic. Unleashing feelings causing all the trouble. The world is full of bots. Passionless honey. No emotional IQ. No emotional IQ. Shit that voices blend together in unity. We put there and you are now. Let me walk in peace. And this is Deborah Cohen. Yay! Walk in peace. If you know. I have a t-shirt on redbubble.com. You can look for my merch because I'm an, an indie artist. And uh, let's see, you can look for Deborah Cohen Music. Make sure you spell it right. D-E-B-R-A Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. And I think I've got a t-shirt on Redbubble that says, You be you and me be me. Because most people have trouble with that. Like, for example, uh, <laughs> if you just watched this commercial which was my song, Better Place. It talks about, it kind of like was, I wrote that song because of, what was it, Sly and the Family Stone that did the song, I am everyday people, da, da. there is a blue one that doesn't like the green one, doesn't like the orange one, that doesn't like the purple one, different strokes for different folks, and so on and so on, and scooby dooby dooby I, I am everyday people. Just let me be who I am, please. And you be you. I'm not going to tell you to do this and that. I, I'm at that age where, you know, I'm comfortable with who I am. It's taken me a long time because I've always had bullies around me. I don't know why. If you're different, like I am, uh, or a misfit, like I am or was, booted out of my family for trying to be honest, um, you know, people will pick on you for some reason. Why is that? You know, like in this world that we're in right now. Oh, yes. Let's pick on the Jews. They get blamed for a lot of stuff. All right. So anyway, but we're talking about Tuba Av, the Jewish Valentine's Day. Tuba Av, a lesser known Jewish holiday, is all about love. And uh, we love talking about and celebrating all kinds of love. The holiday, I told you, takes place, blah, 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 15th of Av, which this year, uh, in 2024, it's August 19. <clears throat> it can be traced back to the grape harvest as a day of matchmaking. At some point, hundreds of years later, it was reinterpreted as a celebration of love. Well, of course, why wouldn't you associate matchmaking with love that's what they're doing they're trying to find your soulmate took me like uh, six decades to find my soulmate <laughs> okay this year like i mentioned tuba of 2024 begins at the evening of saturday august 18th no okay yeah yeah okay so you know in the jewish hebrew calendar the day begins at night <laughs> So what are some ways to celebrate? Oh, here's some more ways in case you didn't like the previous two suggestions. There's no right or wrong way to participate in Tuba Av, especially if you're tailoring the holiday to your own love stories. You can celebrate your unique interfaith love story. Now, I know some uh, rabbis poo-poo it if you don't marry a Jew and you are, you know, so that's whatever, let them be them and let 
us be us. <laughs> you know? Let me have a sip of coffee. Hold on a minute. Mm. Ah, rules, rules, right? Uh, there was this popular song. Signs, signs, everywhere is sign. Mm -hmm. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? Everybody's got, you know, it seems like this rule. We need rules, right? Because if you don't have rules and enforce them, then you have chaos. So for our own safety. Okay. Think about uh, the all in all important people in your life. Okay, let's take a breath. Ah, let out the clutter and those negative thoughts and off-topic thoughts and think about love, the people you love in your life, and reflect on how you can make them feel appreciated during this day. And don't forget, one of those important people is you and me. Yes. Ah, so am I hinting for you to give me something? Well, now that you mention it, you don't have to give me anything except your time. How can you do that for an indie artist you know? Sharing posts, commenting on posts, boost the algorithms, reposting a post, subscribing, liking, sharing, listening, all those things I need. Or how about buying my book? Just go to DebraCohenBooks.org. Okay, so here's some ideas. Get a mason jar, cut up pieces of paper, write down all the things you love about your partner, as many as you can fit in that mason jar. Now, I'm, t I'm thinking about what would my husband like as I'm reading these things? Would he like a mason jar full of notes, like fortune cookie notes? No, he'd, la he'd rather have some kind of a fruit preserve in the mason jar. <laughs> okay, what else? Recreate your first date with your partner or one of your, of your memorable first meetings. Ooh, that sounds like a good idea. Our first date was at Bonefish Grill Restaurant for lunch. I wonder if they have Bonefish Grill in Florida. I'll have to look that up because we've only been here eight months. So I haven't really explored too many restaurants yet. Bake one of our tasty multicultural desserts with your friends and or family. We've also got kid-friendly recipes on this website. It's called 18, the number, you don't spell it out. It's 18doors.org. So if you're, if you have a multicultural marriage, and there's plenty of them, and your spouse or your mate or whatever is a Jew, then you could make a recipe for that person. I think that's cool. My husband would love it. He's such a foodie. Okay, here's another idea. Create a treasure hunt in your house for your partner and have the clues be related to the history of your relationship. Now, I don't get that one. Maybe you do. You might want to put something in the chat and help me. If I create a treasure hunt, that means he's looking for a treasure, right? So have the clues be related to the history. Oh, okay. So in, instead of saying you're hot or cold like we used to do, you're getting warmer. No, instead of that, You'd have to design the clue so it's related to your the history of your relationship. So that would be like we met in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. So I'd have to figure out something. What a barbecue. He, it's got to be food for him to be interested. I'd have to say, find the barbecue sauce, dear, for the next clue. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, here, here's one more idea. Uh, treat yourself to a spa day at home. Whatever that looks like to you, take a bubble bath. Give yourself a facial and watch a lot of Netflix. Well, dearie, darling one that I love, my husband, if you're listening to this, I don't want a spa day at home. I want to go to the spa. Okay. And I also, when I get a massage... Make sure you get a female because I just don't feel comfortable with a man giving me a massage if it's not you. And make sure that person 
uh, knows how to do deep tissue massage. And please, somebody that knows how to be quiet and is comfortable with silence. Silence is golden, golden, what my eyes can't see. Silence is golden, golden, what my eyes... I, is that song or the lyrics can see or can't see? I never heard the T in the song. Can't see. I don't know. And maybe you can tell me in the chat. Okay, so this author says, if you're looking for some inspiration, here's seven more ways to share this. Or, okay, all right, so she talks about her uh, exploration with Tuba Av, Jewish Valentine's Day. What is Tuba Av? Long story short, it's kind of like Jewish Valentine's Day. Okay, all right. So she's talking about what to do here. Let me take a little break and I'll see if it, it is uh, something that I want to share with you. I'll be right back. with these unique gifts written in English, Hebrew, and Arabic. Okay, so I'm back and we're talking about Tuba Av, the Jewish Valentine's Day. Today, Tuba Av is making a comeback in Israel where it's celebrated as a modern Jewish Valentine's Day with ancient roots. To me, this Holiday is an opportunity to celebrate love and its diverse expressions today. Here are a few more ideas of ways to commemorate this wonderful lovey-dovey event. Number one, throw a loving day celebration. Okay, so loving day commemorates loving versus Virginia, 1967, the landmark Supreme Court decision that declared all laws against interracial marriage unconstitutional in the United States. Loving Day is not a national holiday yet, but it takes place around June 12th. So I didn't know that. that at one time, apparently, you couldn't marry somebody from a different race. I guess I was too young to understand or even know about it. I didn't know about it. I'm learning it right here. Okay, though Pride Month is officially the month of June, why not keep the celebration going? Okay, so you can spend the evening watching an LGBT film and get involved and stay updated with Human Rights Campaign. All right. Next, check out At, at the Wells Project's Month of Av Guide. It's like reading your Jewish horoscope every month. Again, that's at the well projects. Four, go on a date night with your love, a moonlight stroll. Oh yeah, that would be wonderful. Oh, maybe my husband will do that with me when he gets his back fixed. Oh, I would love that. Visiting a wine bar. Oh yes. By the way, my husband knows I only drink organic wine and I really do prefer Merlot. Okay, and you're celebrating the grape harvest, of course, or going out dancing or have your own little dance party at home. Number five, go dancing with friends and wear all white. Girls, if you want to dance in the light of the moon and wear your white, light dre white lace dresses together, that'll be kind of fun, you know. <laughs> Six, if you're having a date night at home, whip up one of my recipes like berry labanay, mochi latkes, or Japanese-style cotton cheesecake. Ooh, I'm starting to salivate. And where can you find these recipes? 18doors.org. The number 18doors.org. Seven, sign up for one of 18 Doors' upcoming events. These are great ways to connect with other couples and discuss how you navigate religion in your lives and to think about planning a Jewish wedding. Well, you know, that's it. That's, that's right now. That's it. And by the way, those suggestions were by Kristen Posner. 
And, you know, my husband and I did not have a Jewish wedding per se. We got married at one of his pastor friend's barbecues in Texas because, you know, people in Texas are all about barbecue. And I told you my husband is a foodie, but we did get up in the restaurant during the wedding and we sang uh, King Leonard Cohen's version of Hallelujah together. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so do do it your way. Let me be me and you be you. And just be nice to other people. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to be mean and ugly. Let's get back to respecting one another, even though they might think differently than you. I know that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do because bullies have been around forever. I certainly have had my share of them starting in, uh, let's see, as childhood. Yes, I had a neighborhood neighbor across the street. Her, I, I know her, I think her name was Mary. And uh, she bullied me. I was younger than her. And she's like, maybe, maybe she was 13. I must have been 11, 10 or 11. She was so mean. I just, and she, you know, anyway. Then I had it in high school, the ninth grade, and then the 12th grade, two 12th graders on the school bus picked on me and my friend Cindy. Horrible situation. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Please don't be a bully. Be a special friend on Tisha, uh, not Tuba of Jewish Valentine's Day, or just because. Be grateful for something every day and share that joy with somebody else. Because in order for it to be joy, it has to be shared with somebody else. Happiness, you can share alone. But joy is meant to be shared with others. So may you have a joyful Tuba Av, a.k.a. Jewish Valentine's Day. And share this with somebody if you want to like drop my hint about, hey, did you know Jewish Valentine's Day is coming up, you know, dearie? Just let you know, if you're sitting there on the couch, let, why don't you do something special for your loved one? Maybe this is a nice way to suggest it to them. And share this because there's a lot of people out there that are looking for love. And this will kind of enlighten them, I think. Okay, so I hope to see you again next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And I'm sorry, Wendy and Rick. Rick. I am uh, checking out, but you can find this video archived on my YouTube channel. The handle is at Jewish Rock Music. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next Sunday.